G'day, Glav here and welcome back to Glav's World. Your patronage is much appreciated. This video will be coming to you from Thailand where you will see me and some of my dark side rider mates head up into the north of Thailand where we essentially follow the Mekong River up, which by the way is the border between Laos and Thailand, up to Nong Tao where we meet up with an old DSR mate. We do just short of a couple of thousand kilometres by the time we get home. A very interesting ride. So here we are on our six day trip, five nights, heading up north towards the border. Four of us going, four of the boys uh, from Darkside Riders. Myself, Jens, Sean and Bebsy. It's just a quick liner of all the bikes. Getting ready to depart very, very shortly. Well, we only seem to get a few kilometres out of town today and we cop an absolute monumental storm. I reckon we got about a foot of water in about half an hour. We pull up at a gas station and we have a serious WTF discussion about what to do next. I rung a goader who we booked our accommodation with and as usual, sorry mister, cannot help you, too little period to cancel. So, no cancellation of our booking. So long story short we decide that we're going to push on, uh, push on through the rain and fortunately that we did because it only rained for a couple of more hours and we didn't get a lot of rain after that for the rest of the trip. What is interesting in this is you want to have a look at the crashes that we see in the rain. I don't know what it is over here but people seem to go faster and behave more erratically when it's raining over here and this is when some serious accidents happen and I did happen to catch a few on video for you to have a look at too. Cheers. This road that we're on now on our way up to Buriram is a nice easy ride, scenic bit of road. Not too bad indeed. Well, in Buriram, we head out to the famous Chang Stadium for a feed and a few beverages. It's got a great set of food markets there right in front of the stadium itself and some great bars at the end to partake in a few of the odd beverages available. You can see one of my favourite meals being prepared here, which is Hoi Todd, which is essentially a very crispy omelette that I'm having and I'm having with shrimp rather than with hoi, which is mussels in, in, in Thai. Um, they also add bean sprouts and some rice. It is just delicious. If you ever come to Thailand, this is something you've really got to try. The other thing to note here, which is really important to us bike riders, is this area here is where the Moto GP circuit backs right onto us and where the start line is. So it's worthwhile coming to have a look at. Well here we are in Buriram, stayed overnight here at the Panorama Hotel, interesting, nice place, booked it on a, a goda for 660 baht, problem is with a goda once they had all the taxes and all the other crap back and everything else to it and ended up at about 800 baht each which is disappointing, nice place, only five rooms available according to a goda, interesting enough we were the only four people here. Um, to show you a quick pic of where we stayed. Nice little pool. There's the boys getting ready as we go to kick off. Good thing about today is beautiful sunny day. I just had to show this. Check out the elephants, decorated elephants in the back of this truck. I'm not sure where they're going. So we're now on our way from Buriram through Yathathon up to Makadam. Given Yathathon's about halfway, we've decided to make a stop here and we're going to stop and visit Pratat Kong Karanoi Temple, which is a short, worthwhile stop and is an ancient stupa or Chedi, a structure that enshrines holy Buddhist relics. It was built during the 18th to the 20th century. A sacred Buddha image is also located behind the pagoda. Legend has it that it was built by a young farmer who was very repentant after murdering his mother for not giving him enough rice for lunch. It's a tale that aims to teach forbearance. The stupa is located in the rice paddies of Tambon Tak Hong. It's about nine kilometres from Yasathon town itself. 
Today's ride all up is about 300 kilometres total in. Makadan is a town and the capital of Makadan province, which became Thailand's 73rd province in 1982. In the northern region of the country, it's on the right bank of the Mekong River. It was formerly a district of Nakhon Phanom province. The population of the whole municipal area is about 180 odd thousand people and has recently grown into one of the largest Mekong River towns in Thailand. It's located directly across from Sumavonaket in Laos. The, the city draws many Lao citizens who pop over to take advantage of modern, the modern shopping centres and the sprawling markets. Travellers will find some good eats along with a couple of noteworthy attractions. In other words, it's not full of tourist attractions, this town. We stayed mainly off the highways on our ride as much as we could and we just tried to follow the Mekong River as long as we could. Today's ride will see us do about 175 kilometres only up to Nong Teo to meet an old dark side rider. What you're looking across the other side of the Mekong River there is Lao. So the border is actually between Thailand and Lao is the river itself. So here you are looking at the Mekong River. I'm going to turn the camera around and right across there where that boat, you're looking at that little boat way off in the distance, that's Lao. I'm standing in Thailand. Here's the boys here. We've decided that um, we're going to have a drink. We can get away with this even though we're in a Buddhist temple because we are Phalang. So it's not uh, critical but if we were Thai we could not be uh, we were Thai we could not be drinking here but we've decided we're going to have a uh, Captain Morgan and Coke and enjoy ourselves. Through. So today we're travelling about 320 clicks from Non Tao to Con Ken. On the way we stopped at Wat Tam Pha Dian, which is a beautiful temple located on the side of Phu Phan Mountain. The temple has many interesting rock relief statues and interesting buildings, also petrified timber carvings, etc. The countryside temple is surrounded by many trees on the Fufan Mountain overlooking Sakon Nakon. It's located just 7 kilometres south of Sakon Nakon city and about 2 kilometres east of Route 2339. It's a very quiet and peaceful park. It's got free parking. It's well organised and I've got to tell you this one's a definitely must see attraction. Action.
After leaving this magnificent temple, we head off by taking as many bike-friendly twisty roads as possible, and now I've got to tell you, there's some real bloody beauties. Some remind me, in a smaller version, I guess, of the Mae Hong Song loop. Konken is one of the big four major cities of Isan in Thailand. The others being Yudon Thani, Nakhon Ratchasima, Yubon Ratchatani. It's the capital of Konken province. Konken lies about 450 kilometres thereabouts northeast of Bangkok. It's got about a population of I think about 120,000. And frankly, if I'm really truthful, it just reminds me of this little mini Bangkok type place. Perhaps I'm being a, a bit unfair to me. Because of this, to be frank, I didn't really bother taking any footage or video of Konken because we didn't actually go to any tourist spots um, so there was nothing really to show you of interest. From Konken we head south again to Pang Cedar Falls. Uh, we had a pretty big night in Konken so we didn't get away real early and we did a fairly long stretch down highway number two which frankly is as bad as interesting as watching paint dry but when, once you turn off Highway 2 onto the Pang Cedar region area or Sao Cao, the countryside develops into that beautiful green luscious jungle type typical Thai area. All up today we did about 363 kilometres uh, and I've got to tell you we were really thankful for a home cooked meal and a very early quiet night in just outside of Pang Cedar. We stayed at the Araya Resort uh, and a big thanks to Kurt and his wife and their hospitality there that made it a really pleasant evening. Well, it's day six and therefore our last morning of our ride. We left the Araya Resort and headed for the Pang Cedar Waterfalls, which is about an 11 kilometre ride away. This obviously is just not famous for the waterfalls itself, but also for the millions of butterflies that it has. It's a really pleasant ride out there to the falls from the resort. We were greeted at the toll gate by a really nice attendant, only to be told that even though we'd had this massive monsoonal downpour of rain during the, the last night, that no water was yet still coming down the falls, Therefore, we should save our 200 baht each. That's right, Frang, uh, 200 baht per person. Um, so there was a little shop next door. We were hungry. We hadn't had breakfast. So all we had was Pad Kapow for breakfast and then headed home down the 331. About 250 kilometres for our final day. Well, it's day six and therefore our last morning of our ride. We left the Araya Resort and headed for the Pang Cedar Waterfalls, which is about an 11 kilometre ride away. This obviously is just not famous for the waterfalls itself, but also for the millions of butterflies that it has. It's a really pleasant ride out there to the falls from the resort. We were greeted at the toll gate by a really nice attendant, only to be told that even though we'd had this massive monsoonal downpour of rain during the, the last night, that no water was yet still coming down the falls. Therefore, we should save our 200 baht each. That's right, Frang, uh, 200 baht per person. Um, there's a... There was a little shop next door, we were hungry, we hadn't had breakfast, so all we had was Pad Kapow for breakfast and then headed home down the 331, about 250 kilometres for our final day. Well thanks for checking back into Glav's World and I hope you enjoyed this video coming from Thailand. But please remember that life is really so so short, so for heaven's sake, remember my motto, live life today.